Hello everyone. You're watching Cooking with Dr. Fred and we are back in the Brooklyn kitchen. And so that means some really good different cooking than what you've been seeing lately, but it'll be definitely di different and definitely delicious that I can promise you and definitely healthy. So while we're in my new kitchen, we should maybe take a look at what may be new in my kitchen. Um, you can see with the picture of my dog, that's new. I think I changed the angle of the camera so that you can see the portrait of Remington right here. And this is something really nifty and new that I got that I really love. This is a personal UVC air disinfector. With the importance of indoor air quality being so paramount to everybody's mind right now, I thought I'd go out and get myself one of these. And why I like this Nouveau Traveler personal U UVC air disinfector is because it's portable. You can take it with you. This is made to stick it with your car and it creates this personal space of clean air. And the difference between like an air disinfector, which this is, and an air purifier or a HEPA filter, this is not a filter. This actually grabs 99.9% .9 of everything that's in the air and kills it. Bacteria, fungus, viruses, um, it kills it. So it's really nice to have that little personal zone of protection near you. It's great. I have one in my office. I have one here in my kitchen. Um, I have any, any small space I have one. I actually have one in my IV room at, at the office, but it's a giant one. And you don't have to clean filters on this. It's really great. It just, it just works. Um, but if you want to know more, um, it's called Nouveau Traveler. But anyway, let's get back to the food because I am starving. So this is the time of the year when holidays. So we had St. Patrick's Day just past us. We have Passover and Easter coming up. So a lot of you know that I'm of Italian background, and so I have a lot of Catholic traditions that surround the food that I cook and the culture and the food culture in which I live. But today I'm gonna to move to my, some of my Jewish friends who like to make brisket for, uh, for Passover, which is coming up. So I thought this would be a perfect time to do an Italian twist to a traditional brisket dinner. So all you really need, we're gonna start up with this nice uh, three or four pound brisket I've chopped up some onions, some carrots. I like to leave the baby carrots whole, um, some celery. So typical in Italian cooking, you're using um, celery, carrots, and onion in almost everything. So that's really good. I've got some beef broth here, macadamia nut oil, salt, pepper. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on, there we go. The stove's old in the Brooklyn kitchen, so sometimes it's a little hesitant. But the good news is we turn that on. So what I'm gonna do is sear the brisket on both sides, one, two, sear, tight sear. I'm gonna salt and pepper it first. So I'm gonna salt one side. I heavily salt because a lot of the times you're gonna lose a lot of this in the, in what you're gonna do with it. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna let this oil come to a nice sear temperature because you want it to really sear. You don't want to be afraid of having the oil be hot. That's why it's important that you use a, a cooking oil that can hold up to high heat. So I, as you know, I like to use macadamia nut oil. It's my favorite. Uh, it's great for the heart, all monounsaturated fats. Plus it's got a cooking, a smoke point of like 450 degrees. Avocado oil is another good alternative. It's got a smoke point up to 510 degrees. So that's why you wanna use a nice hearty oil because this is gonna go in the oven. Now, after I sear this, it's gonna go in the oven for three to four hours, depending on your oven, depending on how moist you like the meat. So, but it's really gonna come out really super tender and super delicious. Um, so we're gonna let that heat up in a moment. And then when that gets hot, I'll put that in. And then really it's, it's you're just layering in the next steps. So you're gonna layer in probably the carrots because they're gonna take the, the longest to cook. Then I'm gonna throw in the celery. Then I'm gonna throw in the onion. And I'll keep you on the air until we do that. And then I, it's just a very, then I'm gonna bring you back because I really want you to see how nicely this all comes together and how different it may be from your normal tradition. Oh, I forgot one thing. I forgot the wine. I'm gonna actually use wine to cook. I know that might seem counterintuitive for you, but a lot of the alcohol, alcohol content will just evaporate as you'll see when we put it in the pan to do that. So this is nice and hot. So I'm gonna turn the heat back up on that and get ready for this nice sound. I love the sound of something searing. Get ready. Hear that? I hope you guys can hear that. And yes, I did forget to put the microphone on. I'm sorry, I will scream. So now that I put the other side in, 
I like to just salt and pepper this side. All right. So you're gonna leave that on for maybe a minute or two um, on each side. Two, three minutes, whatever you feel like, however high you got the oil, whatever you're comfortable with. But just make sure it gets brown so it's, it's gonna seal in the juices. And then what we're gonna do next, after that, is I'm gonna transfer it to a Pyrex dish. And then from that Pyrex dish, that's when we'll add the rest of the vegetables. And it smells so good already. So in case what you missed is I seared both sides of the brisket, and now we're gonna put the mirepoix, we're gonna put um, the, the carrots, the onion, and the celery in there, and let it, we, let, we call it sort of like, you just get it a little bit translucent, so it'll take about eight minutes to saute that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that all in now. Oops, no doubt. And you put it right into the pan juices of where you did the, um, where you did the brisket, where you see the brisket. Because that's gonna be a really beautiful way to get, keep the flavor uh, so that it all gets the same flavor palette. Uh, it's just enhancing it as you add into each step. So again, it's all very, very, Low carbohydrate, it's very paleo, very keto friendly so far, and it will continue to be a problem to that. I guess you're kind of wondering, probably, maybe you, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but why I would use wine in this particular dish. Well, the reason I use wine, and it's red wine I'm using, is because it will break down, it'll break down some of the, the chemical structure of the meat, and it will help to tenderize the meat, because brisket tends to be a cheaper, tends to be a tougher cut of meat. That's why you need to braise it. That's why you need to cook it for hours and hours and hours. Whatever your favorite family recipe is, I'm sharing my favorite family recipe of brisket tonight with you. And the one I'm going to be serving is coming Passover to guests who come to my home. Uh, so, the uh, carrots, celery, and onion have been cooking for about seven minutes and they're ready for the next step. The next step, oddly enough, is to throw in half a head of garlic. Not a clove, but the entire head. Skin on, you just throw it right in. When you throw it in, we're gonna stir it for a little while. Um, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do after that. So you throw it right in. We've added nothing else to this. Just, you know, we've used, the, we've used what we were using for the meat the same. So we've added no more oil, nothing like that. So we just throw that in, we let it get, you know, we let it get warm up a little bit, let it get cooked, let it get um, in with the oil. Let it start to break down. Because really what we're doing here is we're doing a braising stock. Now I don't have to do a very big one today because I've already, I already made a big, big one. So I don't have to do it a bigger, another big one today. Um, and what I do is after I've eaten the meat or I've served the meat or whatever and it's done, I save the stock and I just keep adding to the stock over and over again. It just gets more and more delicious. It just gets tastier and tastier and yum. Okay, so that's in there for a minute, as you saw as I was chatting with you. So we just, you know, just let it get with the oil so it's got a little flavor. Now, this is the interesting part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a can of tomato paste. I know again, but it's gonna thicken it up. Now you could use, probably use anchovy paste. I was thinking of anchovy paste. There's probably cauliflower paste that you can use. I like the, uh, the taste of the tomato because the tomato, hey, I'm Italian, so who doesn't like a nice pomodoro? And so we're going to put this in, it's gonna thicken it up. And again, it's gonna suck up the oil so it's really, the pan is gonna be hard to stir, but don't be afraid of that. Don't, don't pour more oil in, because that's when we're gonna add the vino. Il vino. Okay, so we're putting in the paste. So you just put that in, the whole can, you can put half a can, whatever your heart desires. As you know, it's me cooking. So I don't have particularly set recipes. Last week I braised, I braised short ribs last week. So you could use the same thing for short ribs, the same recipe, the same basic stock for short ribs. You can use it for asabuco, which I'm gonna do later on in the week. I don't think I'll show you because it's basically the same recipe. I have to do cooking. Okay. Now we have to stir that in and get everything really, the first time I made, made this type of recipe, I got afraid because it got really got really hard and I got really sticky in there. But that's what we want. You stir it up so that the tomato sauce is sucking up, the tomato paste rather, is sucking up all of the oil that's in there. It's getting on every carrot, every piece of celery, everything. Because what we're 
going to do after we put in the let's just stir this up and just make sure to just basically you don't need the tomato sauce to um, completely I mean tomato paste to completely dissolve in here because that's not going to happen it's going to happen when we put the, when we pour the wine in so you just want to make sure it's all covered so it's kind of even we don't leave any vegetable behind we don't like that and then so that's kind of mixed through. Um, so you can leave this here. Then I'm going to take some wine again. I don't know uh, what kind of wine am I using. I'm using Cabernet Sauvignon. You can use whatever red of your choice you like. Um, you're going to turn up the heat a little bit. And then you can pour some wine in. How much wine? I don't know, a cup, two cups, whatever you feel comfortable with. You, do, you can do it with as little as half a cup just to get some flavor so that it does in cooking what it's supposed to do. You could also use beef broth, which I'm, I may use because I'll show you at the end what we're going to do is we're going to, let me move this, my trusty air disinfector out of the way, which charges by itself, by the way. Well, it doesn't charge by itself. You have a, a little plug that you plug in right there. So it's going to look like this. I don't know, can I... So it's gonna kind of look like that. And then we're gonna fill in, I can't see this here. here. I think you can see it there, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, whatever goes in there is gonna be poured on here. And then what I, what I would usually do is finish it off with the wine or fit toward top it up with beef broth. I have a feeling we're gonna have enough with just what's in there. But let's see, so let's pour some wine in there. All right, so I probably poured in about a, that much of the bottle, so it really wasn't that much. Now this is when you're gonna let the, the tomato paste thicken this up. Some of it will start to stick, but if you're using a cast iron skillet like I am, or you're using, see a lot of it is already burned off, so I'm gonna add in a bit more. That's why you kind of want to keep the heat high so that you can burn off this, uh, the wine when it goes in there. If you really just want, I guess basically you're making a roux. You know, you put the flour and the water together and the butter to make a roux. We're using oil, tomato paste, and some wine to make this roux. So it just gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And that's really, because the, the wine is really just all boiling off. Put them a little bit more. Get them nice and thick. Again, don't be afraid. Keep the heat high. That looks amazing. Okay. Um, I think that's enough. I don't think we need. So I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to move the wine out of the way so I don't drop it knock into it, as I've been known to do. Unlike Julia Child, I did not have any. And then what I'm going to do, and this is going to look a little odd, but you'll get the point. I'm going to pour this over the meat, and I'm just going to push it to the side, you'll see. You're really not, you're supposed to like have the meat on the plate and then pour it in. All right, I'll show you what you're supposed to do. This meat should be on this plate. Like that. And then we're gonna do this. As you can see, this is pretty thick for all half a bottle of wine. That's why you put the tomato paste in. Just wanna pour it right into that Pyrex dish. Of course, you can leave it in the in the in the Dutch oven if you want, and put it in the oven that way. Lots of good stuff to deglaze. Oops, that's a lot. I want this. I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take some beef broth, and I'm going to deglaze the pan a little bit. Proper deglazing would be over the flames, but I'm not going to put it over the flames. I'm just going to basically get the really good stuff off of there, so that it pours into the 
pours into the our beef brisket uh, pot. So let's do that. Oops. All right, so while I put the finishing touches, I'll come back and show you what it's gonna look like before it goes into the oven. Remember, we've been preheating the oven at 325 degrees. Now, the brisket is in this Pyrex pan. I poured everything that was in the, in the Dutch, in the uh, cast iron skillet into here. It's as, almost as high as it can go. If you wanted to go a little bit higher, you can add some extra beef broth, or you can add some extra wine, whatever you prefer. And then what we're gonna do, very good, very tasty, is we are going to um, cover with aluminum foil. And then we are going to put it in the preheated oven, 325 degrees. It's gonna take about three to four hours to cook this. So after every hour, I set my timer for every 60 minutes and then I turn the meat over. That's only so that you get an even cooking on both sides. You don't have to do it, it's optional. And probably, and then um, for the last one, I will probably take the foil off so that it gets really thick. You'll watch it just be boiling by that point. It'll get really, really nice and thick. And that's how you braise something. And I like the brisket like this, so you'll love it too. So that's just gonna go put in the oven and then I will see you in four hours. Okay, let's see what it's gonna look like. Voila, delicious. And so you just take that out, cut it, and then there's nice vegetables in there as well. I can't wait to eat. It's been a long time in coming. And I'm Dr. Fred. You're watching with Cooking with Dr. Fred. We're back to the Brooklyn edition.